Okay, so this is a two-day fishing trip for lake trout, and here I'm pumping my kayak up by hand. My electric pump broke a couple of weeks ago. I didn't think I was going to fish again off a kayak this year. Christ. But I got a call from Elias. Now, I don't think he needs an introduction for 99% of you. He's a professional kayak fishing guide and his videos on the technical aspects of kayak fishing are really second to none. I've, I've watched all of them before I even purchased my kayak. And not surprisingly, I spent most of the day watching him catch what? fish after on fish. He managed to find some very good structure with fish on it in a reservoir that's pretty devoid of structure. So even though right. this isn't a guided trip per se, I'm watching him, I'm watching what he's doing. Damn, son. Don't you know these fish eat Binskis here? Right now they eat Binskis. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> he's using a half ounce Binski and I'm swapping out different baits. I have these fancy Japanese yeah, blade they, baits you know, that, they want that, that, you know, I couldn't figure out why they weren't hitting it. But, Whoa. as he told me on the water, you know, that's something you think about once you get home. And in the meantime, you just, you just do what's working. So I switched to a slightly smaller blade bait and had my first hookup. And this is my first lake trout ever. It's not big, but I was pretty happy. They are the strangest fighting fish. They're almost like a freshwater dogfish, the way they twist and turn. So the main takeaways I got from watching Elias fish, um, at least for lake trout, was how focused he was on his fish finder and positioning his boat so he's always over the optimal structure and also marks a fish frankly and also how keyed in he is with his jigging technique once he figured out something that worked he's not really changing it up experimenting until it doesn't work and yeah i mean these are observations and lessons that you have to incorporate when you're fishing with someone who's out catching you five to one, ten to one. Um, back when I was fishing a lot of party boats, it's the same thing. You know, if, if someone is fishing the same spot you are, and he's catching a lot more fish than you, then you're doing something wrong, and you have to adjust. What? Oh yeah, I. I see that I got uh, some grubs too. Oh! <gasps> it's so weird, they're so mush when they hit. It was on the drop? Yeah. But there's no like distinctive, you know? <laughs> oh, this, this rod is nice. Damn. They take some decent runs though. Wow, he's spinning up all kinds of sh Yeah, what is he like, spinning up shrimp and stuff? I don't know, this one's better though. Wow, they're almost like a fluke at the surface. <laughs> wow, this one's much nicer. They like stall out at the surface and start thrashing around. Now at this point we both switched over to soft plastic swim baits. Oh, 
and this is a 4 inch Kitec Easy Shiner on a quarter ounce decoy jig head and this is pretty much what I'll be using for the second day. So the final tally for day one, I think Elias has seven Keeper Lake Trout. I managed to. Um, for day two, I incorporated some of the things I saw Elias do, and yeah, I'm going to be much more dialed in. And this is in no way a how to catch lake trout video. Just documenting two days of lake trout fishing where the first day I was completely clueless and the second day I improved a little bit. Okay, day two. Um, once again, joined by Elias and his friend James. Much colder day and sunnier and also much windier the fish never really turned on this day and pretty early on I figured out that they wanted a very slow presentation and I'm basically flopping it on the bottom I'm lifting it an inch or two with a lot of pauses in between where it's just dead sticking on the bottom Uh, yep. Real slow. Okay. Real slow on the bottom. Uh, three eight. The thing with these Kitek swim baits, the plastic is very soft. Yeah, and know. when the water is cold it's like this, anywhere. a lot of soft plastic baits, they don't swim all that well. The action becomes very muted. But these Easy Shiners and also Swing and Fat Impact High Tech Swim Baits, man, you, you, they swim at any speed. Basically, if, if, if you're moving it at all, the tail is kicking. like flop it on the bottom yeah I mean they're picking it up right off the bottom no like a like a one inch flop yeah any soft plastic And here is my PB lake trout. It's just a couple inches bigger than the cookie cutter size we were catching for the rest of the day. Um, this one was around 24 inches on the board and I held Elias over to take a photo of it, which I won't even show you because it's a lot smaller than I remembered it to be. Thank you. What, 23, 24? Something like that. A little, like little that. bigger than the others, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But I thought I had to revive a little. Right. Yeah. It's pretty hardy. It's hardy, you don't really like it. Right. No, it's a perfect hook set, just right in the roof of the mouth.
So these new Daiwa LT series of spinning wheels, pretty impressive so far. Tackle Advisors, he is getting a shipment of every single LT series reel in the next week or so. And he's going to put up a full teardown review. I'll leave a link to his channel below too. Most of the hits were very, very subtle, and this rod, the x Prize series, is by far the most sensitive rods I've used, and in this kind of fishing, when you're fishing this deep, and they're basically just kind of mouthing your bait, it really pays dividends. I would say most of my fishing sensitivity in your rod blank doesn't really matter, but this is one instance where it actually does make a big difference. Uh, the rest of the terminal tackle is 10 pound Daiwa J braid with a improved Alberto knot to 10 pound fluorocarbon leader and I tie a craze loop knot to the jig head. So throughout this day, I did not deviate from, you know, I, was, I was showing James a visualization of what my jig is doing on the bottom. Just kind of flopping it back and forth. I'm not popping it or jigging it off the bottom. Um, we, we tried that and just, they, they were not getting roped in to any kind of reaction strikes. And I ran out of easy shiners. Here I'm using, I think, a 3.3 inch fat impact. Also Kitek, also just great action in this cold water. This is actually the two point, no, the three point three fat. Oh, this one's nice. Oh, 
Oh Christ, I hooked this one in the gill. I mean Slack me up this one. There's more head shakes. Gill hooks again. Jesus. This is the last fish of the day. Big thanks to Elias for showing me the ropes. And it's a pleasure meeting his friend James. Uh, great day on the water. I mean, these are all bonus days. I really didn't think I'd be kayak fishing at this time of year. And yeah, stay tuned for upcoming Catch and Cook episodes. I'm doing one for myself and collabing on one with Elias. Not quite sure how that's going to happen yet. But yeah, stay tuned and thanks for watching.